Hello everyone and welcome back. I want to apologize sincerely for not having made a video in a little while. If any of you saw my Dark Seal uh, streams from the past week, you know that I was coughing my lungs up and I wanted to make sure that I was getting better before the next set of Dark Seal and Island Raid streams so that I wasn't coughing in your all's ears for a couple of hours a night. With that being said, there is a couple of videos that I wanted to try and get put out this weekend. So to start things off, we have a request from Ram Ram240742 who has asked about Pompeii as well as a bunch of other videos. But I wanted to focus on Pompeii first and specifically what you can do to get a few more points. And the easiest way to explain that is for me to explain where the points come from and i know this confuses a lot of people so let's get into it if you go into recovery of pompeii you can see all of the building info as well as all of the rules pertaining to pompeii if you want to watch the video where i go over all of these rules go back and be my guest i don't want to do that again However, what I do want to cover is the point system. And it's primarily because people keep making mistakes as to where points come from. So let's get into it. Top of the list here is the LZR IV incubator, otherwise known as the Biolab incubator. If you would like, that's the one that comes out of right here. Each capture of this is worth 3,000 points. It produces every 15 minutes. Now, you can go ahead and put a marker on this center spot for 45, 30, and 15. Those are the exact times that this biolab will produce this incubator over the course of the match. You collect this, take it back to a building that you control, and you get 3,000 points. Easy. It can be difficult to take it away from your enemy if they're also working towards getting it, but you would be surprised how many people, how many alliances leave that center building alone, thinking they can get away with not getting those points. And we'll go over why that's such a huge problem later. The next one we're going to talk about is the, the zombies themselves. It's right here. The zombie leaders appear on either side of the map and they are worth 1200 points per kill for the alliance. And if you've played Pompeii before, you know that they spawn three times a piece. That means there's 1200 points on each side and each one it you can get you can get this six times in total if you control both sides of the map really well. The other zombies around it also give 80 points a kill, but that's pretty minor when you compare it to the 1200 that you get for killing the big boss. You can also put timers, markers on these spots as well for 52, 37, and 22. They happen exactly 7 minutes before the biolab creates its incubator. Every time. The zombies, the smaller zombies, will spawn two minutes prior to that. So you can get there two and a half minutes early, kill all of the zombies as they spawn, and then be ready to kill the big zombie right when he spawns. And it's who gets the last hit. So you want to try and make sure you don't have any high damage enemy heroes sitting around the thing right towards the end. because. I've seen it happen. One person walks in, gets their skill damage off, kills it, and it's theirs. Doesn't matter who de dealt the most damage. So, make sure you're getting these 1,200 points per kill six times. And we'll go over the math later. The next most important one is actually the operations base. Operations base, we're going to ignore this first capture because hopefully 
you're capturing your own side's operation space. If you're letting the other team capture your operation space before you get there, you've got problems. But it's this thing we want to make sure we get. The continued capture means your alliance is getting 160 points per minute that you hold on to it. If it is under a timer, you're not getting points. That's why you'll see a lot of uh, alliances with speed units bouncing around trying to collect these the forward outposts or buildings that aren't protected just to cut off points so that you can't get them and again we'll put all this in uh in a nice spreadsheet format to do the math so you can see exactly how many points this is worth the operations posts are not sand table are positioned right here they're the insides of the map. Now, this map doesn't show it, but there's actually another forward outpost in between these two for a total of six forward outposts total. But that's neither here nor there. The operations base are located pretty close to the battlefield train stop on either side of the map. So you can get 160 points times four if you manage to hold all four. And we can test out the math later. The next ones are the forward outposts. These don't get you as many points, but if you're neck and neck, they can make a difference. Forward outpost gives you 140 points for the first capture. Again, hopefully you're capturing your own. Continued capture is 20 points per minute. With three of them on your side, that's 60 points per minute, and that's still less than a single operation space. But 60 points a minute can add up. Next one, helipad. Pretty straightforward. Helipad is the building that you can teleport to once you control it, provided you have enough teleports to move there. As it shows here, you can move from your red, your base to a helipad of your choosing, so long as you have the relocators. However, actually holding the building doesn't give you a lot of points. People want to hold it due to its proximity to an operations base and to make sure they can have continued access to the center. But holding it is not more important than an operations base, if that makes sense. 30 points a minute can add up, but just remember that if you have to choose between holding your helipad and holding an operation space, you want to hold the operation space. Make that clear. <coughs> now, there are some other ways to get points. They are less important, but I want to go over them really quickly. I already said regular zombies are worth 80 points apiece. There's quite a few of them. I don't remember how many there are in total. But getting these actually gives you buffs for killing the zombie leader. And it's an alliance-wide buff, so you want to try and get as many of these zombies as you can before the zombie leader pops up. Gathering is also another way to get points for your alliance. As you can see, it's far more points for yourself, but it's... A decent amount of points for your alliance. If you have a march that's not doing anything, it should be gathering. Unless it's just too much for you to uh, monitor, which it can be. It's a lot going on. You should try and gather as much as you can. If you notice down here, killing any troops, whether it be on the world map, during a garrison, or capturing a building, gets you no points for doing so for the alliance you get if you wipe out 10,000 might you can get 100 points 200 points or 100 points respectively but those are just individual points killing at all doesn't get you points for your alliance so fighting in the open field with no goal in mind does nothing I see so many people making the mistake of fighting in the open field to try and get points for themselves. And yeah, that can make you look good in the league or in uh, 
uh, personal rankings for your alliance for the season. But if you ultimately lose because you're not holding buildings and you're just killing in the open field, what point? What good is it? You can kill 10 million troops out here in the open field and still lose. So make sure you're killing with a goal. Now, I said I would go over the math of it. I actually have a spreadsheet on the other page. So if you would like to cut the video off here and not watch me go through a spreadsheet format, feel free to do so now. I thank you for stopping by my page anyway. But I made a little spreadsheet for us. I only included the Biolab Incubator, the boss of zombies, the Operations Center, the Forward Outpost, and the Helipad. Because these are the points that you'll, these are where you'll get most of your points. And I've already put in the formula so we can test this out. Biolab Incubator, if you remember, gets you 3,000 points. If you capture it all three times, that's 9,000 points that the enemy can't take from you. I don't know if you've ever been close enough to where 9,000 points can swing a match, but I have been. Keep that in mind. The zombie boss is worth 1,200 points. There are six of them that you can kill. Already, just with the zombie boss and the biolab incubator, is 16,000 points. I know that makes or breaks matches, especially the uh, closer and might ones. Operation Center, if you remember, 160 points per minute. Assuming you only hold the two on your side, and you hold them for the entire match, let's say 55 minutes. Already we're at 33,000 points, just holding your side of the map, and killing the zombie bosses and the biolabs. Forward outposts, we'll just go ahead and fill these in the same way. Holding your side for 55 minutes, not 550. And helipad, holding your side for 55 minutes. 40,000 points can win a match. Just defending your side of the map and taking the center and zombie bosses. It's a big difference. Let's say you end up losing one of your operation centers for half the match. So instead of holding it for for 55 minutes, you're holding two for an average of, say, 30 minutes. Big chunk of points you lost. You can do the same thing over here and watch it not make much of a difference. Same with the helipad. You lose your side of helipad or forward outpost, it's not a big deal. You lose your operation center, that's a lot. Let's say you manage to take one of theirs for a good majority of the match. And we're already back up over 43,000. Just holding one of theirs for the majority of the match. If you hold one of theirs for a majority of the match and then don't take any of these, which we just had a, a Pompeii match against someone who did exactly this. They lost the zombie boss and the biolab incubator completely, but they did manage to hold one of our operation center for, I would say, a good portion of the time. 28,000 points doesn't win. It doesn't. You may want it to. It it may seem like you're supposed to be ahead because you've controlled one of their big buildings for a good portion of the match. In the end, it doesn't matter. Now, I will put this spreadsheet up on my Discord page if you would like to play around with it. I will be uploading it this afternoon. If you would like to head on over to my Discord, 
feel free to pop in, use the server invite link. I will keep it in the helpful info tab here and pin it so that everyone can test out different theories that they have for how to get the most points that they can. Or if you just want to see the maximum amount of points you can get, feel free to fiddle around with it. Make a copy, do whatever you want to do with it. But before I continue to talk your ear off about numbers, I'm going to leave it there. And with that, this is Mr. Brain, your friendly neighborhood gaming dad, signing off.